Daniel Nelson here. Going to take a different approach today on a start to finish mix. Things are going to be a little different than a traditional mix is because when we listen to the tracks, they're very, very close already. Today's little workshop is more about how to get the most out of something that already sounds good. And we're just going to have some fun. The center part of this entire song is based around the guitar. Why I chose today for our big chorus, this song, was because I feel, in general, it's a great song. You could screw it up really quickly with the wrong reverbs. You could screw it up really quickly with the sound of your drum compression. It all could come crashing down once you have it all going, and it will just lose the audience, or the listener specifically, this is one of those songs that sounds really cool in headphones when you're sitting back on your couch or wherever with your eyes closed. Again, the start to finish thing where you leave it feeling different than when you started it. So considering all that, I would like to pull up the electric guitar. This one doesn't have a terrible amount of sound issues because we virgin tracked it on its own after the fact, even though Todd played on the rhythm section live drums bass and guitar when we did it live we overdubbed this with a little better tone at rand studio with a 57 and a buyer dynamic 160. both mics sound great did you get that out both mics sound great on their own but when you combine them, it adds this really special hard left, hard right, I'm in the center thing that is not necessarily stereo, but it's not necessarily mono either. And it's a left to right thing versus it being a front to back thing. If we jump these into mono, Even if we balance it, clearly there's some phase things going on with the guitar having two different mics versus it just sounds a little more like you're with the guitar. I did leave these on here. I'm just scooping a tiny bit of 200, 250, 270 on both tracks, we're sculpting here. And then I have a little bit of the CLA, LA-3A, just taking some of the peaks out. I'm gonna take these out, because I think I wanna hear a 160 on the whole package. And also, I don't wanna put a compressor on one side and on the other, two channels, because it's going to operate a little differently. So if I put it on the stereo, it's gonna pull everything down it's very subtly adding a little bit of a flick to it that makes the guitar sound a little bit more alive. Okay, for this guy. I'm going to go back to the Helios. But instead of the Helios, I'm going to use the Waves. That is basically the Helios, but it sounds a little different on the electric guitar. If I just engage the 60, 
This is an Andrew Shep's trick. Engaging the 60, but not touching the gain on the bottom end of this guy. That's a little more body, and for guitars, works really well. Instead of doing something like an R bass or adding low end of an EQ, it's a harmonic thing. And again, it sets itself a little different. <laughs> Pair the two. This is the Waves version, HLS. Heard the low end pop there. Let's pop in the drums. Automating a little bit of the bass. how the guitar sounds with this 160. There's a honkiness I don't like on this Helios UAD compared to the Eddie Kramer HLS. So I'm going to leave that on. I'm going to pull a tiny bit more 4K on. Add a little bit of 7th Heaven reverb. I mean, this is the track, to be honest. The 7th Heaven we have is Sunset Chainer. Pretty much all I use on the Procasti anymore. It's hard to change it. I just want to make sure my pre delay is good. the hardware EMT, but I'm going to today use the UAD version. Now boosting the low end of the EQ of the 250 allows the decay of the low frequency to extend leave the top in where it's at because I don't necessarily want to hear it and it's got a definite personality it's different than like say the Procasti 7th of it. I am 
starting to hear a little bit of the collapse of the drones. Okay, already can tell you that the decapitator was too much for the drum bus. be on the bass, so I've got to be careful that we're not hitting too much at the bottom. Instead of taking EQ, I'm going to dynamic EQ it. We'll come back when we need it. going to take a little bit of the spring and put it hard pan to the left. Just to balance the guitar out a little bit. a little bit of here, a little bit of a pokey thing for the drums to be kick, snare, bass, electric guitar, not too ethereal because there's going to be some synth stuff, but enough to create the hug effect of the stereo spread. thing to consider is because there's synth stuff and there's some pad stuff going you're gonna find quickly that what happens is when you pull in the pads and stuff those almost simulate wetness like reverbs so when you feel like you got the reverbs good on the guitars and then you pull in the synth stuff you're gonna find quickly that it might be too wet Digging into the guitar a little bit, you can hear a little bit of that thunder, the little bassy stuff that the uh, HLS was adding to it. Before I add any reverb on the drums, Ryan Hermit played a lot of the overdub instruments on this as well, the guitars and stuff, prettier guitars really added a really nice no, presentation is probably the wrong word it just works really well again you're finding that this is not necessarily the mixing universe this is more about feeling and how to create movement I know that part right there there's going to need to be some big build up that as the release. That guitar is too loud.
start this again and listen to our synths and see what we have going. The sustaining note that is underneath the guitar, it's not changing, which is causing a little tension. So we have to be careful with that nice low mid thing. And put it even further out using the old imager here. It's probably 24 year old plugin. But I actually like the way it sounds on guitars a lot. We take out the EQ and the imager. The guitar alone is fighting with it, let alone everything else that's going to be in it. No reverb. No soothe. No aggressive EQ. Just a little tucking. Works pretty well. And if you look around, very similar part there where I want to create a little bit of an open. this maybe add a little 250 let's do 224 actually a little more blade runner reverb I'm gonna put in the old hall the 224 has a romantic relationship with synthesizers because of Vangelis it just works so well together that it instantly gives you that sound where you know what you're hearing and there is a throw here so I might do some automation as well to throw the reverb on its own bank. So instead of putting it here, I'm just going to do take K, sin, save it, and then open it up on its own send. So I will pull this guy. Next to the synth part. Automate that depending on where I want it to be. is it's clipping the converter causing a weird distortion artifact that's the 224 that distortion is exactly why that reverb is so cool and again there is an absolute love romantic story going on between the synthesizer and the 224. They just work so well together. Mm -hmm. 